next one what is the next question what is the time complexity of the following this question you should answer they have seen this type of question we have seen so many times so many times this type of question they have repeated try to give me the answer of that what is the time complexity of the following recursive function and option is here okay now see here it is saying that int uh, they are asking what is the time here they are asking the time complexity what is the time complexity of the following recursive function you are correct him also following recursive function for this recursive function they are asking the time complexity you are correct right so if i am assuming that to do something it, it is p of n i am assuming that it is p of n okay I'm assuming it's p of n. Now, when n is equal to two or smaller than equal to two, then p of n. When n is equal to two, so you are checking n is equal to return one. Only you are doing one constraint. Only you are doing one constraint. Now, in if it will go in else part. So else part it will go in one constraint. But if n is not, n is not. Means let us say if n is greater than two. If n is greater than two, then this condition will not satisfy. And we go else part. So one constraint work for else part and for this summation part plus n. So for plus n, it is going to take one constraint. N. And see, for do something, if this if the end, the time complexity is going to be t of n. And for do something, floor of root, the floor of root n means square root of n. It is going to be t of floor of okay, floor of root n. Floor of root n. See, is it clear? Please let me know. If the function do something with the input size n, if it will be take t of n as the time complexity, then do something. If the size is floor of root of n, then it will take time complexity as t of floor root n. Okay. Now this is the equation we have got. Now we have to solve this equation. We have to solve this equation. Uh, Rasdeep is saying, sir, why one? Please repeat. See, see, Rasdeep, why we are getting one? See, because you are doing after this time complexity. Again, you are adding plus one, plus n, plus n. Why not plus? See, plus n you are adding, n you are adding. But time, how much time you will require for ten plus five? Constant time. Na? Ten plus five, constant time. Na? Here you are doing the. Uh, here we are finding the time, not the sum of it. So, if after finding this, the time complexity of this do something, you are adding plus n. So, this addition is required constant time one. Okay, so it's going to be one plus. Yeah, correct. Okay, Rajdeep understood. So now the time complexity is going to. We need to solve this. T of n is going to your. We have seen that T of n is going to your. T of n is going to your one plus. And you know that whenever it in in this function T of Whether it is sorry, whether it is floor or ceiling, you are going to get whatever it is inside. You are going to get that only. Yeah, correct, Rasdeep. Every step is going to take constant time only because summation is going to take constant time only. You are just adding something, so it is going to your t of root n. Okay. Now see, this is not in master theorem, and I have taught you if these things is not in master theorem, then you have to assume. Let n equal to two to the power n or any for any thing in the power of two. Then in place of n you can write t equal to two to the power n. Then one plus t two to the power m by two because it's root. It's root. It is like one plus t of n by two. Root is power n by two. So two to the power m into one by two. Okay. So now as you let t to the power two m. Now see here, m is going to your log n base two. Okay, since I assume n equal to two by m, so what is going to be the value of it? M is going to your log n base two. So let p two by m be a function of be a function of of f m. Okay, I am assuming that it is a function of f m. Now, so in place of p two or two m, I will write f m. Whatever it is in the power, that is going to be the function. So it is going to be one plus Here it is m by two, so it will be f m by two. Since here it is power m, so it is going to be f. Is it clear to all of you? 
now it is in master theorem now it is in master theorem where a is this is the a here a is going to your a is going to your one which is greater than equal to one the condition b is equal to two which is greater than one k is here zero k is here zero because end bar k zero then got and b is here is okay now you are going to compare a and b to bar k if you are done with the writing then please let me know is it clear to all of you then also please let me know anyone still having doubt then you can ask me you can comment sab samajh mein aa raha hai na sabhi ko kahin koi doubt hai to puchiye now we are going to compare a and b to bar k a is your 1 and b is your 2 b is your 2 a is your here 1 so it is smaller okay sorry k is your 0 k is your 0 k is your 0 a is your zero so now a is equal to bit per k and p is greater than minus 1 then tn is going to your then here tn in place of tn it is going to fm is going to your theta m to the power log a p log p plus 1 m okay is it clear so theta m log a a is your 1 A is your one, B is your two. Log P plus one, zero plus one is one. M. So that is going to be zero. So it is going to be nothing. M M to the power zero one. Log M. So in place of M, it is going to your. In place of M, it is going to your. In place of M, it is going to log in base two. Because M is going to log in base two. Is it clear to all of you?